everyone, it's Allison here. I'm here with a brand new Zen Doodle With Me video. Uh, this one for the week of March 12th through March 18th. And so, yeah, here the tangles I'm going to do today are Stitch, Regardu, Ironwork, Cloudfall, Ha Crawl, Evelgrom, and me. And so, these are, of course, coming from the Zen Doodle, or the Zen Art Challenge, um, and that is hosted by Heather, and I'll leave a link to um, my source for these tangles down in the description below, as well as to the Facebook group for the challenge. So let's go ahead and dive on into these tangles. The first tangle I have for you all today is called Stitch, and it's by Carrie Hewn. And this one is a nice little border tangle that you can put between two other tangles. So the way that stitch works is you're going to start by making some U shapes that have a little bit of space between them. And you're also going to repeat these U shapes underneath but offset from the um, U-shapes that you did up above. Then with those U-shapes in place, you can then go in and around where you have two nearby U-shapes, you're just gonna make a little circle um, or oval shape that connects them and fill that in. And that is stitch. Um, nice, straightforward, simple, again, a really good border piece. Um, and yeah, I highly encourage you to play around with it and maybe come up with different ways to fill it in. But for now, I'm going to leave this one here and move on to the next tangle. The next tangle I have for you all today is called Regardu, and it's by Simona Cordara. And the way you get started with this one is you're going to start by making this stretched out S shape and this stretch is going um, out to the sides. Like that. And then you wanna make a slightly deeper S shape on either the bottom or the top end, depending upon where you want uh, your second line to be. And then we're going to mirror this, going in the opposite way. This creates um, two leaf shapes. And um, between those leaf shapes, we're going to do a um, partial square that out of the top has um, a couple of lines and to add some detail in the middle we're going to echo around once twice and in that second one we're going to fill it in to connect everything is regard to. Um, obviously you could do this with a bunch of others as it's in the example off on the right um, but this should be enough to get you started with that so I'm gonna move on to the next tangle. The third tangle I have for you all today is called Ironwork and it's by Silke Wagner and the way you're gonna get started with this one is you're going to make a grid of um, circles 
so, but you want it to be a diagonal grid. So. With your circle grid in place between um, any pair of two circles you're just going to do a little parenthesis that connects them and on the interior you're going to double up that parenthesis like so circles or anywhere that there is overlap you're just going to fill it in and that is ironwork I actually really really like this tangle and I want to play around with it some more, maybe make a larger grid, um, or make a series of grids, because I think it's super, super pretty. Actually, of all the tangles I have today, this is the one I was looking forward to. Um, but yeah, I, I like how this came out. Um, obviously, I need to create a little more regularity in some of my curves, but you know, Considering this is my first time attempting this tangle, um, I think it did pretty well. So I'm going to leave this one here and move on to the next tangle. The fourth tangle I have for you all today is called Cloudfall, and it's by Lily Moon. And this is one of those that can fill a nice thin space that you have in whatever tangle apparatus you're working with. And so... The way you get started with Lily Moon is you start by making a curved line that waves back and forth. Then on the um, return parts of your curves, you're just going to draw a part that comes out and curly cues in. From the curly cue, you're going to do a little parenthesis shape that connects that curly cue down to the original um, curly, curvy line that you drew. Then, coming from the curly cue and connecting back around, you're going to do a series of curves that Follow your original curve until it connects down to um, the part below it. the parenthesis curve and the final curve that you drew on the interior, you're just going to fill in that space. I can kind of see how it got its name, the 
um, curves here almost look like wind currents that are turning over on each other and forming clouds. So yeah, I think that's kind of pretty. But I'm going to go ahead, leave this tangle here, and move on to the next one. The fifth tangle I have for you all today is called Ha Crawl, and it is by Holly Atwater. Um, so the way that we're going to start with this one is um, we're going to start by making a square grid. I'm going to do mine a little bit larger than what you may wish to do in your own work. Um, but that's so that way I can accurately demonstrate the details. From here, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to alternate um, between your types of squares. Um, so starting in the upper left-hand corner, you're gonna wanna draw a line that goes up from the upper right corner down from the lower left corner and then on either square either to the left or right or down from it you're going to draw a line that goes to the left from the upper left corner and to the right from the lower right corner And as you can see, I have managed to bungle that just a tad um, by putting my upper in the wrong spot. So uh, to make things easy on me, I'm just going to come in with a white gel pen. And mask it. When it dries, it'll tend to look a lot nicer so then the next thing that you're going to do is um, from your upper line you're going to draw a piece that comes out around and down follows the lower line and you're gonna make a couple other lines in there that follow the same pattern and ultimately what you want to be able to do is to connect it to the pieces nearby. crawl. Obviously in a larger grid setup this creates a bit of a weave pattern that you can do as tight or as loose as you want. I've done this one extremely loose um, to further emphasize all the details that go into it. Um, and yeah obviously I made a few mistakes um, that I think would have impacted the integrity of the tangle which is why I used a white gel pen to just cover up those little extra lines. Um, sometimes I will try to just explicitly incorporate what I feel got messed up, but didn't feel like it this time. Um, but yeah, I hope this gives you all something to think about and to work with. But for now, I'm going to move on to the next tangle.
The sixth tangle I have for you all today is Evelgram, and it's by Nicole Dreyer. And the way you're going to get started with this one is you're going to draw a curved line that comes up and ends in a teardrop. Then as it starts to curve back around, you're going to make a um, pair of half circles that come up up above and then around these half circles you're going to draw pairs of parentheses that face away from each other or towards each other um, but each pair you have is really facing away if you look at how they're actually paired up. Then between these pairs of parentheses, you're gonna do another parenthesis that connects the two that are paired together. Then between each of these little leaf-like shapes, um, we're going to draw little curve lines that come out and end in a point. And to really bring this one out, I do think this one needs a bit of color, um, but it's a nice simple little flower where the petals are these pairs of parentheses that are coming out, and the leaves are the little skinny parts that also protrude. Um, but I like its simplicity, and I'm going to go ahead and leave this one here and move on to the next tangle. The final tangle I have for you all today is called Me, and it's by Mina Hisiao. And the way that you're going to start this one off is I'm going to go ahead and square off um, the area I'm working in because um, this one can be used to um, tile and just making sure I'm still in frame. Indeed I am. And then into the corners you're going to make a scalloped edge that points inward. Then starting with one of the scallops, you're going to come in and form a point. So just a little heart. And you're gonna repeat that around. You may want to center it a bit more than I did um, to create this layered like effect. And then each side of, inside of each of these little heart shapes, you're going to draw another heart. finish filling off the space you can go um, into the negative space in between and just echo the shapes all the way around and that is me um, again, as I mentioned, you can choose to make this into a tile, as seen in the example off on the right. But, yeah, other than the correction I mentioned for myself uh, partway through the instructions here, um, I think this one could be a lot of fun. There's a lot of potential for how to fill and color it in if you don't want to leave it as just the lines. But I'm going to go ahead and leave this tangle here.
All right, that is it for this week's Tangles. I want to thank you all so much for watching, and if you want to see more from me, go ahead, give this video a thumbs up to let me know, and subscribe to my channel. But in the meantime, take care and have a wonderful, wonderful week. Bye.